and good morning children now uh, we have discussed in the previous class the classification of living world need for classification also we have discussed now classification of the living world a comparison of classification proposed for classification proposed for classification of the living world first we have discussed in zoology also five kingdom system of classification was proposed by r h whitaker an american taxonomist in 1969 these kingdoms already we know what are the five classes no monera where the prokaryotes are included protista eukaryotic fungi planti and animalia these are the five classes now the on which basis he classified or r h whitaker classified the living world into five classes now the criteria adopted for classification underline their cell structure thallus organization a level of organization mode of nutrition and reproduction and the last one is phylogenetic relationship these are the criteria he had taken into you know, consideration for classifying the living world now in that uh, zoology also it was not there in the book but you have made that one now in the botany it is given these five classes how they are different from each other on the basis of those criteria now merits merits and demerits are the merits means what are the advantages this classification is based on the complexity of cell structure and organization of thallus it is based on mode of nutrition that is the advantage separation of fungi from the plants fungi also plants but they are heterotrophic not autotrophic so he had separated fungi from the other plant groups it shows the phylogeny of organism phylogeny means we know evolutionary relationship he made that one also that means which group of plants have come from where uh, whom which group of plant so he made that one also he tried to make now next one disadvantages or another term is also called demerits the kingdom monera and protista he had kept uh, accommodated both autotrophic and heterotrophic organisms monera and protista monera generally prokaryotic protista eukaryotic both accommodated accommodate both autotrophic and heterotrophic organism cell wall lacking and cell wall bearing organisms thus making these two groups more heterogeneous different viruses were not included viruses were not included in this system these are the two demerits and now next after our age we take her in 1969 so many other scientists came time to time and they also proposed the system of classification of the living world based on uh, the rh whitaker system of classification next after we take her carl us and co workers in 1990 introduced three domains of life the bacteria archaea and eukarya based on what based on the differences in rna nucleotide sequence lipid structure of the cell these two criteria rna nucleotide sequence r rna nucleotide sequence and um, the lipid structure in the cell membrane then a revised six kingdom system of classification for living world was proposed by cavalier smith thomas cavalier smith six kingdom system of classification in 1998 and the kingdom monera is divided into two archaebacteria and eubacteria archaebacteria and eubacteria recently rogerio rogerio et al et al means his team members together 2015 published a seven kingdom classification so six kingdom system of classification proposed by cavalier smith seven kingdom system of classification was proposed by rogerio et al in 2015 which is a practical extension of cavalier 636 kingdom system of classification according to this rogerio system of classification there are two super king he made two super kingdoms prokaryota and eukaryota prokaryota includes kingdom archaebacteria and eubacteria and eukaryota includes protozoa chromista he added protozoa chromista fungi planti and animalia new kingdom chromista was introduced by rogerio et al and uh, uh, he told that 
it included all algae whose chloroplasts contain chlorophyll a and c that is the important criteria he introduced for classifying the uh, chromista as as well as various colorless forms that are closely related to them like diatoms brown algae cryptomonads and oomycetes were uh, placed under this kingdom so that is a, a system different system of classification proposed by different scientists at different times now next we are going to discuss one by one the different organisms which are present in plant kingdom so first we will be discussing called the bacteria the bacteria means generally we know bacteria are our friends at the same time they are our enemies foes bacteria are helpful to us we are getting different types of products from bacteria common example which has been given in your book which is called the card now we are getting from bacteria lactobacillus lactis and at the same time they are four for us four means enemy they are causing different types of diseases one such example we have studied in 10th standard also it is called salmonella typhi which is causing the typhoid to us like that so many different bacteria they are causing different types of diseases to us so bacteria are both friend to us and enemy to us also so that is the introduction now this one inside the box has been given for one mark question robert koch already we know that one also what is the intro, uh, what is the contribution of robert koch in um, this plants or bacteria about the bacteria he identified the causal organism for anthrax cholera and tick causal means one causing agent what is the name of the bacteria what are the names of the bacteria that are causing anthrax cholera and tuberculosis he had contributed that is his contribution that was his contribution so and in addition to that he only cost postulated germ theory already we know 10th standard also we have discussed germ theory was proposed by robert koch and for that reason he was awarded the nobel prize now next that is one one mark question in the green color box what is the contribution of robert koch now my stones how this branch or how this bacteria had been um, identified or this separate branch of biology has been developed first one has given introduced ehrenberg 1829 coined the term bacterium so one more question who coined the term bacterium ehrenberg christian gram he introduced the staining method how we can identify under microscope we need the stain that one discovered by Christian Gram according to his name only the name of the stain is called the gram stain gram stain bargi postulated first edition of bargi's manual frederick griffith he was an english microbiologist and he only told that bacterial recombination takes place by transformation now joshua lederberg discovered the plasmid now these are the milestones one mark question only contribution of different scientists in the branch of bacteriology bacteria we know they are the prokaryotic organism unicellular ubiquitous underlying they are ubiquitous seen everywhere in the air in the water on land everywhere in the space also so everywhere we can see throughout the world wherever we go we can see the bacteria which is called ubiquitous in nature microscopic organisms the study of bacteria is called bacteriology virus we have told virology bacteria is called bacteriology bacteria were first discovered by dutch scientist anton van leeuwenhoek already we have told and he coined the term that is um, anton van leeuwenhoek he first time discovered bacteria and were called he called them as animalcules he had not coined the term bacteria bacteria coined the term was well, coined the term was done by ehrenberg but later by uh, leven hawk he discovered and he told that these are nothing but the animal very minute animals now next we are going the general characteristic features Uh, bacteria bacteria are prokaryotic organisms why they are called prokaryotic organisms no nucleus is not um, it is uh, not bounded by the nuclear membrane and 
membrane bound organelles are absent these two important criteria for prokaryotic organisms so bacteria also having the same characteristic feature organisms lack nuclear membrane and second one is membrane bound organelles are also absent genetic material is called nucleoid or xenophore or incipient nuclei because the chromosome is not bounded by nuclear membrane that's why it is called the nucleoid the cell wall is made up of polysaccharides and proteins most of them lack chlorophyll hence most of them they are heterotrophic and they are causing the diseases to vibrio cholerae which is causing cholera to us but some of them are have autotrophic also and some because of the presence of bacterial chlorophyll eggs and bacterial chlorophyll is present in chromatium now th- next point is they reproduce vegetatively we know that one by binary fission and endospore formation they exhibit variation which are due to genetic recombination that is important and is achieved through three different processes conjugation transformation and transduction so these are the important things till here okay thank you children